Hey everybody, this is Bobby Deeds, Wildlife Specialist for Record Act Deer Feeds here today with your weekly nutrition tip. I'd like to talk a little bit today about when to start feeding and why. Um, we're coming to the tail end of deer season, and I know a lot of people like to pack up the guns and head home and forget about the deer for a while. And nutritionally, that's really the worst thing you can do. Uh, January, February, and even March for some of the more, more northern states are three of the most nutritionally stressful months uh, there are for deer, particularly our bucks. Um, when you consider the fact that They've lost as much as 30% of their body condition and are really run down. And the nutritional value of anything that's left standing, you know, for most parts of the country is almost nothing. So it's a stretch for them just to be able to maintain the condition they have and survive the tail end of the winter, much less put any body condition back on. So extremely important to help them with some sort of supplementation. Um, just a quick note on what, what you put out there. Try to stay away from real high grain type rations because when you get an animal that's really run down from a nutritional standpoint and give them a really high starch type diet, you can do more harm than good. You can actually cause acidosis and, and kill them. So be sure you're giving them a balanced pellet, preferably free choice. Um, and I, I'll even put hay out sometimes, some good alfalfa hay if uh, we get into some really extreme conditions where there's no forage, forage at all. So uh, just an important rule of thumb, if you wanna keep those middle age class deer that we were trying to get to maturity alive, give them some groceries. And you know, the other thing that people forget about is body condition is always gonna take precedence over antler development. So say we don't do anything and you know, those deer do survive to the spring, but they're extremely run down. The nutritional value does come back well, everything that they take in when they should be growing antlers is going to go to be uh, to replenishing body condition and not to antler development. So you can lose 60 days of antler growth just by them having to, to build their body back. So, you know, if you're trying to maximize genetics, feed early. Um, if I only had a budget and I could feed for 90 days and that was it, January, February, and March is where I would put my money. You're going to influence them more in the next 90 days than you will any other time when we're talking about free range deer. Um, you know, hopefully we get a good April and May, <clears throat> get a good spring, and that'll push them on through. But if you want good results, you want to maximize genetics, you want to get more bucks into the next season, feed early. Um, don't forget about them now because just because deer season's over, they're, they're out there and they're, they're trying to survive. So anyways, hope this helps. If you'd like to learn more about supplemental feeding, if you'd like to learn more about Record Rack, look us up at recordrack.com. Give us a call. Thank you.